Hello, welcome to our series of lectures on decoders and what it means to add an enable signal to a circuit. All right, we'll talk about active high versus active low, what enabling means, and later what a, what a binary decoder is. All right, so concepts of active high and active low. We've been talking about binary logic level, so we have a logic level high and a logic level low. Right. We also talk about the active state of a circuit. Right. And that goes back to relating to whether or not a higher or a lower voltage represents uh, the logical state. So we could have a high voltage represent a logic low, which seems like an inverse, or a, logic, a high voltage represent a logic high. In the same way, we could have a low voltage represent a high, or we could have a low voltage represent a low. Right. So typically when we talk about an active high signal, then the logical high is what activates the signal. So logical high is a one in an active high signal or an active high state. The logic level high is a one and the active low is a zero. But we can also have then a state where we say the active high is a logic low and the active low is a one. We have to specify that in our circuit behavior. Right. This is all terribly confusing right now, likely to say it like this. It's not until we work with these circuits and start specifying their behavior and look at their truth table that you'll get a feel. Like anything else, right, we've got to use a concept, see how it's used, and practice it before we know what that really means. All right. So let's think of an AND gate right, as being some sort of decoder circuit. We know that for an AND gate, when all of its inputs are high, the output of this gate is high. So we call that an active high output. So when its inputs are active high, and with an AND gate, then active high has to be ones, right? One ended with one generates a one. So we'll think of an AND gate as an active high output, where its inputs are active high. So active high generates active high with an AND gate. But in NAND gate, right? then we call that an active low output because a low signal, two zeros, input into a NAND gate, generate a high. So active low in that case, zeros, logic lows, are generating highs, ones. Right, so we'll call that an active low output. Right? And we'll see our, we'll, we'll, like I said, let's go into some circuits where this will make more sense. All right, so before, uh, we go into the decoder circuits, we're going to talk about what it means to enable a circuit. Right. So enabling simply means that we're going to permit an input signal to pass through to an output. Disabling can replace the input signal with a fixed output value, which will be either a zero or a one. We'll specify that in our circuit design requirement. That means then we'll have an extra signal called enable or often abbreviated EN that's going to be required to determine whether or not the output of the circuit's enabled, right? It's kind of like a light switch. Are we allowing the light to be turned on or off? The switch is controlling whether or not that light is enabled, right? So a simple example here with an AND gate. We're going to say if enable is one, the input X reaches the output, right? We'll say it's enabled, but if enables is zero, the output is fixed at zero or the output is disabled. So let's look at our AND gate here. When enable is a one, right, we know whatever the value, whatever's the value of X will flow through the output. When enable is a one and X is a zero, the output F will be a zero. When enable is a one and the output X is a one, the output F will be a one. But when enable is zero, it doesn't matter what's on X because we know the behavior of the AND gate is whenever any one of the inputs, in this case, enable is a zero, that output F will always be a zero. So it will be fixed at a zero state or disabled. So we can talk about then, we use terms like active high enable disable output zero. This is describing then how the circuit works, what the logic state of the enable signal is and the output whenever a circuit is disabled. So active high enable means that an enable signal of one allows the circuit input to pass through to the output. We're describing that down here in this behavioral truth table. Right. Otherwise, the circuit specification disable output zero 
means the circuit output is always a zero when the enable signal is a zero. All right. So here's our behavioral truth table. We have two inputs, enable and A. And so we said active high enable. Active high enable means when it ever enables a one, whatever's sitting here on A will flow through to the output. But when, when enable is a zero, we don't care what's on A. Here we specified that the disable output is a fixed value of zero, so we have a fixed value of zero. So that's our behavioral truth table. Now we can expand that to a Boolean truth table. So this is the same circuit, right? Active high enable, disable output zero. Same description here, but here's the Boolean truth table. We said whenever enables a zero, we want a fixed output of zero. So notice here the out circuit output is a zero whenever enables zero. It doesn't matter what's sitting here on one, the output is a zero. But now when the circuit's enabled, so we said it's an active high enable, meaning whenever enable is a one, whatever's sitting here on A can flow through to the output. So when the circuit's enabled and A is a zero, the output is a zero. When the circuit's enabled and A is a one, the circuit output is a one. And then now that we have our truth table, right, we can write a Boolean expression for this and simply solving for the single one here, our circuit would be F as a function of A and enable is equal to A and it with an enable. The other behavior we can have is an active low enable, disable output one. So active low enable means that an enable signal of zero, so that low, that zero, that logic low of zero, allows the circuit input to pass through to the output. Otherwise, the specification disable output one means the circuit output is always a one when the enable signal is a one. Right. So here we're saying behavior is whenever enables a zero, what's ever sitting here on input A should flow through to the output. But when enables a one, again, we don't care what's on A, and we specify then that the output should have a fixed value of one. Well, that's the behavioral truth table. We can now expand that into a Boolean truth table. So again, active low enable, we said active low enable means the enable signal is a zero. That means the circuit's activated. That means whatever's sitting here on the input, A, flows through to the output. So active low enable, so enables a zero, whatever's sitting on A, here the zero, flows through to the output, the output's a zero. Active low enable, enables a zero. Whatever's sitting here on A, which happens to be a one, flows through to the output. But when the circuit's disabled, well, the circuit is disabled when enable is a one because active low enable means enable the circuit when it's a zero, disable it when it's a one. And we said in that case, we don't care what's on A because the fixed output will always be a one here. And so now if we solve this, I solve for the zero because there's a single zero. So that our max term here is A or with enable. That would describe then this active low disable output one circuit. All right, so from that, right, you should remember that active low enable means zero enables a circuit. Active high enable means a one enables a circuit. Let's go to an example now. So we've got this car control, right? And we say in most automobiles, the lights, radio, and power windows operate only if the ignition switch is turned on the ignition switch acts as the enabling circuit. We'll define then our automotive system as having the following four inputs. IG will be the ignition switch, RS will be the radio switch, LS is the light switch, WS is the power window switch. And the automotive system will have three output states. So the lights on or off, radio on or off, window power on or off. And what we'll say now is we'll define that our input switches, a value of one will mean a switch is on. So when IG is a one, that's on. When LS is a one, it's on. When RS is a one, it's on. When the window switch is one, it's on. Zero will mean off. So one means we're going to turn it on, activate it. Zero means it's going, or the state will be off. Right. Now the output states, same thing. We're going to specify that a one means it's turned on. Right, a zero is off. So the lights are on when they're a one, they're off when they're a zero. Radio's on when it's a one, off when it's a zero. Window power's on, one, off, zero. 
And so we'll call these outputs L, R, and W for lights, radio, and window. Right. And let's fill out the truth table then. And this is a condensed truth table because we said when the ignition switch is off at zero, all of the controlled accessories are off. So here are inputs, right? Ignition switch, light switch, radio switch, window switch. So this is our enable, this ignition switch. And we said whenever this is a zero, everything will be turned off. The lights will be off, the radio will be off, and the windows will be off. And we said off with zeros. So we don't care what's on these inputs. So we have condensed down the truth table to show we don't care what's on these inputs whenever the ignition switch is a zero. Effectively, we're, we've disabled right, all of these. And we said that the fixed output then would be the off state or zero. Now when the ignition switch is on, right, we'll go through the rest of our possible binary combinations. When the lights, radio, and windows are off, well, the lights, radio, and windows will be off. Here, right, everywhere down below, remember we're enabled, so the ignition switch is one. Well, the lights should be off, lights are off. Radio switch is a zero, radio's off. But the window switch is a one, so we say the windows are on. And so we have now these three outputs in this truth table that we've defined then, we say then the inputs flow through to the output whenever the circuit's enabled by the ignition switch. And so now that we have our outputs, we can just solve and write our Boolean equations as we would normally would. <coughs> oh, and I'm just saying here, reminding you that these X's here are simply don't care. Right, it's representing all the possible terms that start with zero. Right. So we know then, right, all of those outputs were zeros. And then here are the rest. This is the truth table we've seen before. We're going to solve for the ones simply because we have less ones in the circuits than zeros. We could solve for the zeros as well. Right. But it's fairly easy in this case, right, to solve for the lights. Let's look here. The lights are turned on for, in this case, if we look at min terms, right, this is, well, we don't, here we really don't care what the radio in the window switches are, right? They don't affect the lights at all. So all we need to, say is when the ignition switch is on and the light switch is on, when the ignition switch is on and the light switch is on, then the light should be on. And that's an AND gate relationship. Now, if we group these four together where the lights are on and we use Boolean algebra to reduce this, we would end up with the same equation. IG and with LS will produce then the light output. Similarly, right, if we go through and we find where the radio switch is one, if we were to put this into a group of four, we would see then that it's going to reduce to the ignition switch and it with a radio switch will determine whether or not the radio is on. Finally, the ignition switch and it with the window switch will determine whether or not the window switch is on or off. Right? And that's basically the behavior we defined in English. We put that into the form of a truth table and our zeros are ones and came up with this circuit then to control our uh, switches in our car. And so if you were to create that circuit and run it through a simulation, it's what I did here. I showed all 16 binary combinations. So what I'm showing here, is look here, when the ignition switches to zero, we said that, that everything in the system in the car should be turned off, all of those outputs. And you can see that the lights, the radio, and the windows are all turned off when the ignition switch is off. Now here, when the ignition switch is turned on, we've enabled all of those circuits. So now what we should see for the lights, well, here the lights are off, here the lights are off. Here the lights are on when it's enabled, so the lights are on. Okay, so again, in this half when everything's enabled, well, when the radio switch is off, the radio's off. When the radio switch input's on, the radio's on. Radio off, radio off. Input, radio on, radio output on. Same way with the window switch, Right here in this half, when everything's enabled, we can see that the window switch is oscillating between zero and one across here. We can see that the window output follows the same pattern. So our circuit worked. And so that ignition worked as an enable. Right. Uh, you don't have to do this as a student task. We used to 
do this in a class that physically met where we have all terror development boards where we can actually draw this signal, draw the circuit and put it on a board and use switches and LEDs for outputs. Uh, but we're not doing that in this particular lecture. All right, that's the end of this part on enabling. In the next series, we'll come back and talk about what's a decoder.